welcome to a novel console, your weekly podcast where we talk about books, games, food, and stuff that caught our attention during the week. My name is Chris, and with me is my beautiful and no longer sick co-host, this wife, Karen. Woo! No more sickness. I, I, mean, I still have a little bit of cough, but it's nowhere near. I remember the last week I said that you were no longer sick. Did I? I did. I did, yeah. No, I, I was still sick last week. Yeah, and you corrected me and said, no, I'm still sick. Or something yeah, I like was that. like recovering. Yeah. For the most part, I was just still somewhat dying. So how are you doing apart from being almost recovered? I am fine. I'm just ready to get this damn surgery over with because I want to eat some fucking food. I know. I'm so over it. <laughs> I'm, I, 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 it kind of pays me to say it, but it, it hurts me to eat Culver's. I don't want to eat Culver's for a little yeah, while. Yeah, no, because we, we, like, I found the couple things that my gallbladder will tolerate. Um, places that have, like, more reasonable fat content. So we've been eating at those places over and over. Well, I mean, we eat at home a lot more than we did. But it's um, always the same thing. It's just we rice do and go salmon. Out, oh, shut up. If we do go out, we have to eat the same places over and over because I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared to go anywhere else. To be fair, like, a lot uh -huh. of places have some outrageous fat content. Like, a lot of things, if you really started to look at what kind of fat is in it, oh, my God. Whew. It's bad. Yeah, it's very bad. Hey, um, this week we were supposed to do the Backlog of Doom Winners episode with Thrak. Yes. Um, unfortunately, he's not feeling well, so he asked if we would like to uh, reschedule. Yes. So, we're rescheduling. Uh tentatively is that a word yes for the 4th of july but that is days after my surgery so yes. so I don't know for sure that i'm going to feel up for sitting in here in one position for upwards probably like two hours because that's how long we talked last <laughs> time <laughs> so it, it might be that week it might be the week after yes um if it's not that week then we'll release one of our patreon episodes out um, for your listening, uh, uh, consumption. I mean, it's a holiday anyway. So like, do a lot of people, sit, excuse me, sit down and watch, uh, sit down and watch our podcast, <laughs> sit down and listen to our podcast on a holiday. I don't do know. We have a lot of holiday listens. Um, I, did we have Memorial Day listens? Memorial Day is not a real holiday. Yes, it is. It okay. Fourth of me. July is bigger, I guess. It's yeah. more. I guess the fourth really um wouldn't we wouldn't get a lot of downloads but i know tuesdays after major holidays we kind of blow up in downloads so um if if anything um we can hold it off till the week after so it either it will either be the fourth or what's a week after that the seventh right the seventh no <laughs> no no it's seven days after the fourth oh the 11th that's the 11th yeah yeah i don't know what oh, man my brain like, my whole brain and body are just one complete mess. Oh, guess what that day is? What? Oh, our th five-year <laughs> dating anniversary. Yes, it's also Slurpee Day. That's true, Slurpee that's Day. that's how I always remember our dating anniversary, Slurpee Day. Earlier when you were telling me uh, the, the names of the people from the books that you're going to be talking about for me to write them down, uh -huh. you had to spell them. And I was looking at you weird because... The letters that you were spelling out to me um, sounded like gibberish to me. What? Yeah. I was saying them so clearly, and you were looking at me like I was a maniac. That's how fucked up my brain is right now. It's just... You're really tired. My my body is just crap right now. Um, but you know what's also crap? What? Our Patreon. Oh, my God. Our, Our Patreon. Patreon? Yes. Yes, because we haven't uploaded in so long. Hmm. Yeah. I think our listeners know by now that we're really bad yeah. about being consistent. Yeah. Uh, mostly it's been my fault this week. Karen was ready to go, but work has been hell. And I I really haven't felt up to it to do anything. Um, but this is your last week. Of what? At the job. Right, yeah. And then month. you start a new job. I do. That should leave you less tired. Way or at least less, less tired. physically tired. Way less tired. Um, Maybe mentally tired. I can do mentally tired. Uh, physically tired, sitting in this position with my body all fucked up, that it hurts. Anyways, uh, yeah, two bucks a month gets you extra episodes and shit. We are still 
on Star Wars. We're still on a Star Wars kick. Um, we have uh, Obi Wan, and we have the Last Jedi to talk about. We also have the Return, the Last Skywalker, or whatever the fuck. That Just last make it movie a goal is. to get the rest of the Star Wars episodes out by next Wednesday when the show ends. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. by that week, because we yeah. can't review the last episode without Until watching it. Until it airs, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. But anyways, yeah, uh, hopefully tomorrow we should be able to record some. When you get out of work, I'll have dinner ready and everything. We'll yeah. eat, sit down, record real quick. Yeah. Get that shit out there. And hey, uh, don't forget to give us a review wherever you review your podcast. Tell your friends about the show. It really helps when uh, you guys spread the word out, because every time uh, the word gets spread, we get a lot of listens, and it's a lot of fun. Um so we watched an awful, awful movie this weekend. Yeah, it was made worse by the fact that it was so late at night and we were already tired before we even got there. And it was so we're long. Old. We're old as fuck. And it was crowded mm -hmm. for such a late night movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we went to see Jurassic World Dominion. <laughs> um, I would wait until it comes out on streaming, personally, yeah. if you haven't seen it yet. It's not great. It's not good at all. Uh, the best part about the movie was Bryce Dallas Howard. The trio. The original trio. And uh, Laura Dern. A anything else Jeff other than Goldblum. that? Jeff Goldblum. It was fun when he became Jeff Goldblum. When he turned into his normal self. and He not... was Ian Malcolm for five seconds. Yes. And then the rest was Jeff Goldblum and it was amazing. He, he Being his weird ass self the whole movie. He's the best. I love him so much. It's so funny. He's so weird. It, it just felt sometimes like they had just thrown Jeff Goldblum into the movie with all of these scientific dinosaur people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just have just random ass Jeff Goldblum just sitting there. This random 69-year-old actor. Being weird. just here in all of his black clothing. In all his lanky glory. Yes. He's mm -hmm. so freaking tall and skinny. Yeah. He, he is a weird looking man. He is a weird man too. He's like a praying mantis. He's like an animatronic. Yeah. He looks uh, like, an animatronic praying mantis. He looks like he escaped. He was one of the children that lived in a small world and he escaped and grew up. Yes. That's what he looks like. Yes. That's how he moves. Or he was like one of the malnourished people on Pirates of the Caribbean. And he escaped. Yeah. 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 That, that could be a possibility. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe the reason why they haven't uh, unfrozen Walt's head is because Jeff Goldblum took it. Oh, my God. After he escaped from Disneyland. I can't. No? No. You don't think that's that's possible? No. Uh, well, if you if you listen and think that's possible, please send us an email it's at ridiculous. a at gmail.com. And uh, we'll talk about that some more because mm -hmm. it's great. I think it's a, it, I think it's plausible. But we will not talk about Jurassic World Dominion anymore because it's not worth talking about. No, it is not. But you know what? It is worth talking about. Uh, Pocky and Rocky Reshrined. I managed to get a copy of the game uh, on Friday, right? No, on Tuesday. I don't Thursday, remember. Thursday, on Thursday because it was the day before uh, the new Mario game came out. Uh, the new Mario the soccer. soccer game. Game. Which is hard as balls. It and is then you so say the frame rates like off, bad, uh, so, not good. Okay, so whenever you score a goal, uh, the character who scores the goal does like a little animation, and it is choppy and frame rate horrible, and it is it just looks bad. Like the rest of the game runs perfect and it looks amazing, but when they go into those cutscenes, it is just plain bad. It just made me think of Wii Sports while you were playing it. Why? I don't know, because you had soccer on Wii Sports, didn't you? I don't know. I never had a Wii. Oh, I right. Never, I never had Wii Sports. I did have a Wii for like five I minutes. I feel like soccer's on there. I can't remember Oops. now. You're making me question everything. Soccer is on the new uh, Switch Sports. They took the Wii Sports Maybe I'm mixing it up it with Wii. tennis. There was tennis. Like the court, yeah. Yeah, there was tennis. And I played tennis and bowling and baseball. That's what you played? Mm hmm I loved bowling. I was really good at bowling. Everybody loved bowling. Even Grace and Frankie loved Grace bowling. Grace and Frankie love bowling, and I love them for it. That's so funny. But yeah, uh, Rocky uh, Rocky and pa Pocky and Rocky Reshrined. Um, it is by Taito and uh, Natsume. And uh, uh, Pocky the Shrine Maiden and Rocky the Raccoon are back together in the latest installment of this high-paced classic shooter. The evil Black Mantle is back, and it's up to Pocky and Rocky and their, fav and their friends to put a stop to him once and for all. 
play alone in story mode, or would a friend in free mode play as Pocky, Rocky, and one of three new characters? Try to top the online leaderboards. Um, this game is hard as fuck. What? Yeah. So I, I've never played a Pocky and, uh, Pocky and Rocky game before, and I think this is like a... a, a I don't know if it's a, a remake or if it's a sequel or what, but it is so fucking hard because um, there's constant enemies just coming at you and you have your, your abilities as you shoot. Um, I was playing as the girl who I have no idea what her name is. Um, Pocky. It says so. Oh, my uh, God. <laughs> yeah, Pocky. Um, and I was throwing like my uh, fucking uh, seals at these monsters and they like seals like ocean seals. No, <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> throwing a whole water dog. <laughs> I can't make a seal noise. <laughs> that was yeah, that 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 thing. That's what I was trying to do and failed. <laughs> throwing a whole water seal at a fucking demon. <laughs> That's amazing. You no, should no. make that game. <laughs> it's no, it's a seal, like a, a strip of paper with kanji written on it that seal demons and shit. Oh, lame. Um, and. It's unrelenting. There's just enemies coming straight at you all the time. I think I got, I, I tried to replay the first stage like five or six times. The further I, I got was like the next screen after the first mid boss on, on the first stage. That's sad. And there's like a very easy mode that you can buy if you get like 30,000 coins. And I didn't buy it because obviously I got so frustrated that I turned it off. <laughs> But there's like coins all over the fucking place. Like you kill enemies and you pick up coins constantly. I don't know if those save and build up or if you have to beat the stage for them to build up. But if that's the case, I'm never going to unlock super easy mode oh, because it. it's so hard. Uh, but the game looks amazing. It has very nice music and it actually is fun as hard as fuck as it is. Um, it is. It, it's strange. And the cool thing is that um, the box is kind of cool, right? So it has mm -hmm. like old like watercolor style uh, 80s anime drawn on it. And this only cost 30 bucks. So That's impressive. I don't know how much it's going to be digital because I bought this at my local retro game store um, for 30 bucks. And uh, I think this is going to be my talking on the phone game for a while. Um, do you have a, a talking on the phone thing that you do? What's that mean? Somebody calls you, you're talking on the phone, and you need something else to distract you so you can focus on the conversation, so you start doing something no, else. No, I can't read a book while I'm talking on the phone. No? No. Mm. You talking about just anything while I'm talking on the phone? Yeah, doing something that's not just talking Watch on the TV. phone. Watch <laughs> TV. <laughs> or clean. Clean? Yeah, I think about yesterday. Talking on the phone and cleaning. While we were all talking, and I was cleaning the whole time. Not that y'all were boring or anything, but I, I couldn't just sit there and not... Oh, me and Danny? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I was in my groove. I had to keep going. Yeah. You know, but... No, my, my talking on the phone game. Like, uh, my dad calls me, and I know it's going to be like an hour conversation, and I just need something to distract me so I can focus on the conversation so that the rest of me doesn't go insane and wants to explode from just sitting in one place. So, last time I did that, it was Resident Evil 4, and I ended up playing all the way through after the first major boss in the game. And then I was like, I might as well just finish the game. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's nice to have one of those things. Um, I, I guess. Yeah. 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 So uh, you brought something for this week's sex toy. I did. Oh, I wish I hadn't. Why? There's some really disturbing things on the internet. I think I'm going to get a virus on my phone. You're going to get a virus on your phone? Yeah. But at least it's from Etsy. No, that's that's uh, okay. Um, it's not the. I said it in intro topics. Yeah. Okay, intro. Topics. I mean, we could talk about that too. No, that not, was a lot of fun. Let's not talk about that. I feel okay. like the wow factor of it has has gone already. For us. Yeah. The rest of the world might not have lost the wow factor. Yeah, but what people love, and especially last week, they absolutely loved you bringing in a sex toy. Burger Champ was so proud. Thank you. Because you did such a good job with it. Thank you. Um, I was proud of myself. Okay, so let me see here what you sent. Uh, Canem Creations. It's both of those toys. Oh, my Both God. of them. No. Yes. Yes. Oh. So I first searched 
some popular fandom that I like sex toy. And of course, the first thing that pops up is Etsy. And Etsy is the safest place to go. But the toys look kind of boring and like stereotypical of what you would think for that fandom. I'll just go ahead and say it. It was Harry Potter and they were just magic wands made into dildos. Um, So then I just searched on Etsy, weird sex toys. And the first thing that comes up is a horse pussy. A horse pocket pussy. It's called the River Dream. Mm. Yes. 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 There's even a lovely video, um, like, demonstrating how the folds open. Um, apparently, it comes with a can of horse-themed soda. I don't know it if that's just big. a product comparison. It's okay. a comparison. It's okay. Size, so I mean, they, sh- they should send you that horse soda. Um, I, I don't. I, I don't. There are lots of really it's good rib. reviews. It's they say that inside. it's the most amazing little pocket pussy they've ever had. What the yeah. fuck? This yeah. is. I think you broke me. Uh, okay, but then it gets weirder. This shop only has two toys, and the other one is a wolf dildo. It's a wolf penis. It is a wolf penis for your most fantastical pleasures they're both called fantasy sex toys because horse pussy and wolf dick yeah. nero it's called nero wolf it's very fantasy pointy dildo very pointy this... and you can customize the color palettes of both of these you have so many different options oh he's jiggly he is very jiggly i don't like this. he is pointy he's this, terrifying this is upsetting yeah yeah it i'd say so Oh, excellent product and excellent customer service. Yep. I wanted the colors not listed to match an item I already owned, and the sellers were amazing at accommodating my request. Oh, I got glow in the dark, and the glow is super bright after being charged with UV. The silicone feels really nice and soft, and the size is perfect for beginners. Definitely. This is like a Jacob Black dildo. Is this from Twilight? No, I'm just saying, because it's a wolf. Oh. It's a werewolf dick. I don't know what's more upsetting. They both have really good reviews. It's really disturbing. Really disturbing. Okay, so... I mean, you do you, I guess. I guess it's better that you're getting this fake toy than it is you, like, going out in the wild and (laughs) And being... an actual wolf. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Doing some bestiality (laughs) shit. No. That is frowned upon. That That is is not okay. You do not do you with that. No, no. No, okay, bad. So a lot of these reviews just say that they managed to get the colors that they wanted. So are these people just using these as like a display shelf item? Like, what the fuck does it matter what colors your dildo is? Like, nobody's going to see that shit. It's going to hide in the drawer next to the bed. It doesn't matter what color it is. <laughs> Why? 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 I understand if you, like, go into the local sex shop and they've got, like, red, blue, pink, and purple. It's like, oh, I want the pink one. But, you know, like, ordering a sex toy online that you get to customize this color palette for, what is the point? Why? Quality is amazing. Packaged perfectly and arrived safely. The silicone is super soft and feels amazing. Truly beautiful sculpt. Oh, Oh, God. This toy is absolutely absolutely terrific it's so soft without being floppy there's a subtle texture and i'm super happy with the colors this shipped overseas and it came fairly quick for me comes with a lovely instruction seat sheet and carrying for your toy and some hilarious ass candies what candies what thank you so much canem creations oh god this is i don't know which one's more upsetting this the horse pussy or the the wolf and, dick. And it also doesn't help that the horse sticker or the horse face... Looks like a seductive horse. It's a horny horse. It's a horny My Little Pony. Oh my God, that looks awful. Yeah, yeah. But you see, it's like a fucking horse butt. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. Why? Yeah. yeah. Yep, it's a lot. It's a lot. But they say it's the best thing ever. Okay, so you know how usually you're the one that that gets like um, grossed fluff? out by yes, these. I am grossed out. I I think I, you're more grossed out than I've ever been right now. Yeah, I don't think I've. You're I've, appalled. I'm just like freak out. Ah, you're yeah. just like my life is ruined. 
My life is ruined. Look at how ripped that shit is. I know. I know. It looks real. Like, did somebody study a horse's butthole for this? What is the actual title of it again? River Dream Fantasy. What? A River Dream Fantasy Horse Masturbator. Two no. hole. <laughs> Two hole with custom colors. <laughs> it's $114.62. <laughs> Pay in four installments of twenty eight sixty five with Klarna. Oh, my Klarna. God. I can't. I can't. Oh. Why? Okay. Okay. Let's move on. That was enough. We're, we're we're good now. I wonder how happy Burger Champ is gonna be. You're gonna that get you did this so many to viruses. No, it's okay. It's Etsy, but still, Jesus Christ. Oh God. Yeah. What? What? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That thank that was you. that I'll was good. You bow. managed to do something to me that has never been Horrified done before. You. Yeah. Do you you put these links in our show notes? To the no, sex toy no, 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 because just in case, uh, bus proud or Apple yeah. podcast or whatever, it's like, don't do this. Um, but if anybody wants to see them, they just know message, how to reach yeah, out to yeah, us, just message us at a novel at gmail.com or just message us if you know us personally, we'll send you the links. It's Etsy, so it shouldn't give you viruses. Oh, God, <laughs> your awful. search history may be fucked, but mm-hmm. your algorithm, it's like, oh, here's the latest. I don't know, elephant pussy. Oh, God, no, that's stop. so wrong. All right, all right. Let's go into <laughs> let's go into discussion time. This week we are being lazy and discussing books and video games that we want to play in the near future much like a backlog of doom but not a formal backlog of doom because these are games that uh well at least my games i uh, well not not really <laughs> point is these are uh books and games that have caught our attention that we are definitely going to play sometime soon but these are some that we got recent enough where they're not going to sit in a backlog right Yes. Yes. Ish? Yes. Yes. I know that at least some of yours you got yesterday. <laughs> well, yeah, the day before this, re- within the last couple of days, and yeah. one of them is a library book, so I have to read it soon. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So uh, we might save our thoughts on these after we play them for future episodes. So, uh, do you want to start with your first book? I can. My first book is My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. Um, I recently reviewed on the podcast two books by Tessa Bailey. Um, the Alexis Rose book and her sister, the Bellinger sisters. Um, it happened one summer in Hook, Line, and Sinker. So this is by the same author. Um, this is kind of like a cozy mystery, which is not really what i like to read but um it's got some spice in it and i really like the way she writes spice so i hope i like it plus the dude on the cover has tattoos and that's hot no oh, lord okay so <laughs> it just came out tuesday this past tuesday the 6th um so an all new spicy murder mystery from Tessa Bailey, New York Times bestselling author of It Happened One Summer. It was supposed to be a relaxing vacation in sweet sunny Cape Cod, just me and my beloved brother. But discovering a corpse in our riddle house really throws a wrench into our tanning schedule. Now a rude, crude bounty hunter has arrived on the back of his motorcycle to catch the killer and refuses to believe I can be helpful, it's despite a dog. countless of. Countless hours of true crime podcast listening. I will not get horny reading this if it's dog. Is, no, is dog thank you. <laughs> what if it's Boba Fett? If it no, if it's um, if it's uh, Din Djarin, then that's it's fine. Not Din Djarin. It's him. No, it's not. It's him. No. Not to mention a fulfilling teaching career of wrangling second graders, a brash bounty hunter, and an energetic elementary school teacher. The murder-solving team no one asked for. But thanks to these pesky attempts on my life, we're stuck together come hell or high tide. I'm just here to do a job, not babysit an amateur sleuth. Although, it is becoming less and less of a hardship to have her around. Sure, she's stubborn, distracting, and can't stay out of harm's way. She's also brave and beautiful and reminds me of the home I left behind three years 
years ago. In other words, the painful hunger of protectiveness she is waking up in me is a threat to my peace of mind. Before I sink any deeper into this dangerous attraction, I need to solve this murder and get back on the road. But will fate take her from me before I realize the road has been leading to her all along? This right. sounds terrible. I hate it so much. And I'm so excited it to read it. It sounds so bad. It sounds so, it so sounds bad. It sounds fucking awful. And you know, when the when the Barnes & Noble employee had to go find it for me and then brought it up to me at the customer service desk, I looked at it and I'm like, this looks like indie author printing. Like, this is not like legit publishing house quality material. So <laughs> I'm a little worried. It looks like she printed it herself and then had binding put on it. <laughs> and, so, and Goodreads doesn't even list a publisher, but like, I know she's legit. Not that indie authors are not legit, but you know. She did it in her um, basement. Yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. Oh, it's going to be so bad, but it's I'm excited. Be trash. So, uh, for my first game, um, I already picked a game that I'm going to play for Zelda Month, which will probably be the only Zelda Month game that I get to play. That means you got to read a Zelda comic. Um, I decided to pick another Zelda game for uh, my first uh, pick because I've actually been wanting to play this for for a long time, replay it for a long time, and then I listened to uh, Remember the Game's episode on it. And it is Le uh, The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds. And while I was listening to Adam and his guests talk about it, I was like, oh, shit, I remember that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that was clever. That was awesome. I was like, huh, that game really was cool. I really need to replay that game. And uh, basically, this is a sequel to A Link to the Past, which we covered last year on Zelda Month. Yes. So it's set 200 years after the events of A Link to the Past. It is in the same Hyrule. Um, the only difference is that it is uh, it is an isometric 3D game, so it's not sprite based. And there's a bunch of different things in this game that are way different than in the original uh, A Link to the Past. So not only is it uh, two point uh, isometric 3D, um, you also have the ability to become a painting in a wall and walk along the wall as a painting. Oh, that's kind of cool. You can tackle the dungeons in whatever order you want, but you have to rent the items to go to that dungeon, and then eventually you have the option to buy the items to go into that dungeon and finish it. So, like, you can rent a bow for 20 rupees, and if you want to buy it and keep it forever, you would have to pay, like, 300. So, this game, I remember it being a lot of fun, I don't think this is in my top five Zelda games, or even in my, it might be in my top 10, I'm not really sure. But I really want to replay this game because I remember that the ending, there's a major twist to it, and it's very interesting. And I can't wait to see if uh, this holds up today as it does in my, uh, in my memories. Uh, what about your next book? My next book is the other book that I got at Barnes & Noble the other night, The Girl from the Sea by Molly Knox Ostertag. It was published on June 1st of 2021 um, by Graphics. Um, so it is from the author of The Witch Boy Trilogy comes a graphic novel about family, romance, and first love. 15-year-old Morgan has a secret. She can't wait to escape the perfect little island where she lives. She's desperate to finish high school and escape her sad dis divorced mom, her volatile little brother, and worst of all, her great group of friends who don't understand Morgan at all. Because really, Morgan's biggest, biggest secret is that she has a lot of secrets, including the one about wanting to kiss another girl. Then one night, Morgan is saved from drowning by a mysterious girl named Kelty. The two become friends and suddenly life on the island doesn't seem so stifling anymore. But Kelty has some secrets of her own. And as the girls start to fall in love, everything they're each trying to hide will find its way to the surface, whether Morgan is ready or not. All the things she said, all the sad said, running through my head, running oh my through God. my head, running through my head. <laughs> so this is a graphic novel. Um, I'd seen it reviewed on bookstagram like the day before we went to barnes and noble and i saw it on the table and i was like i gotta have that book i gotta have it right now because the person who reviewed it was gave it five stars and is a lesbian i was like i, I need to read that right now <laughs> that's some good quality lesbian shit uh, so so after this book you might uh leave me 
Well, I, I, I recently read a lesbian romance that I was going to review today if we had done a regular episode, and I'm not going to lie, it made me feel things. <laughs> <laughs> so, what better time to tell everybody that than this month? <laughs> lesbian romance makes me feel things. I'm going to be single soon. Makes me feel soon. confused. <laughs> no, it's not that kind of confusion. You know there are people who like both, right? And people who like all. Yeah, that's true. All varying stages of gender and its fluidity. Yep. Yeah. There are. Anyway, this is awkward. Let's move on <laughs> to the next. No, it looks really cute and colorful, and I'm trying to read as many um, LGBTQIA plus books as possible this month and all year. Remember, we need to diversify our reading all year long, not just one month to be like a poster kid for allyship. <laughs> You, you know what I haven't noticed? What? Companies haven't been gay this month. No, some have, and they've been getting a lot of backlash for it. They have? Yeah, a lot of backlash. Because at least on like Twitter, I haven't seen any of, at least any other companies that I, I don't follow any companies, but any other retweets or, or sponsorships, none of them have gone gay. There are a lot of people on Facebook bashing. Um, there was like, oh gosh. Last year was real bad. It was every single company, even GameStop. Yeah. And then as soon as it became July, it's like mm -hmm. Gone. back to normal. Gone. Gay people yeah, no. don't exist anymore. Nope. You got to remember to love everybody all year long. All year. Exactly. Not <laughs> just during June. And, it and just, not just during the other specific months. Can't only love black people during Black History Month. Exactly. Can't only love the gays during Pride Month. You can't only love whoever during their month. Yeah. It, it just seems like pandering. Like the whole thing. Like... Is there a Latinos month? Cause a Latin history month, something like that. Latin, I, I don't Latin know. There probably is something like that. You should know. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, not that I shouldn't know, but you should know more than me. Um, <laughs> how funny would it be if they did a, 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 a Latin history month and they just put like Arroja Bichuela on their logo. Oh my God. <laughs> like they made their Machete. logo, they make their, their uh, logo out of rice and beans. I die. <laughs> so and tacos. And that, oh, with man. cheese and lettuce and tomato on them. Like I, 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 I like, I like a lot when they acknowledge, like they do like pieces on, Hey, look at this employee. Look at everything they've accomplished. Um, but I don't like it when they do, Hey, look at this employee, look at what they accomplished. And he's also gay. Like that's like, what, what, why, why did you have to throw that at the end? It's like that, th is that supposed to define him too? Not just his accomplishments. Uh huh. So, uh huh. So I'm, I'm, it's like that one time in that workplace that I know of where, um, it was like the tensions were high after, um, the, the, the bad things, the riots and everything back at the beginning of the pandemic over race. And, oh, um, uh, boss man was like, take some promo photos with our one black employee. Oh, cause oh. he's black. And the poor employee was like, why am I having my photos taken? And then they, they had, had to, to be like, yeah. Yeah, that was do you really not understand why you're chosen for this? It's terrible. It is terrible. It is. I get, it's cool that, you know, they get a month. Everybody gets a month. It's cool. Yeah. But I mean, you you need to remember them outside of that month, too. Yeah. They don't also, only Also, exist. just don't don't pander throughout the month. Just, like, acknowledge it and wish everybody a happy month. But don't, like, make a spectacle out of I it. I only read gay books from June 1st to June 30th. <laughs> if, I'm, <laughs> if I'm halfway through a gay book on July 1st, I'm never I'm reading not, it I'm again. DNFing that shit. It's going to the used bookstore. I can't read it anymore. Not until next year. Or I'll pick it up again on June 1st of next year. It's there you go. So bad. <laughs> so bad. This fucking world. I hate this world. You know what's funny, though? What? Read this title. Chorbs. <laughs> this my next game is Chorbs. Uh, it's actually uh, called Chorus, but the U it's in the shape of a V, so it's Chorbs. It's very confusing. Yeah, it's made by uh, Deep Silver or published by Deep Silver and Fish Labs. I, I really have no idea. Like I saw ads for this game on YouTube one day, and I was like, "Oh, that looks fun." Um, it is a, a space shooter. Uh, something along the lines of uh, Star Wars Squadrons. Um, but it says the 
these this ends with us. She was once the circle's deadliest warrior. Now she's their most wanted fugitive. As Nara and her starfighter, Forsaken, journey across the galaxy to unite resistance forces against the circle and free the universe from oppression. Did I read that right? As Nara and her starfighter, Forsaken, journey across the uni- the galaxy. Yeah, that's weird. It sounded weird in my head. Um, so it says, explore a dark universe, explore it. Venture into a sci-fi universe teeming with mystery and rife with conflict. It's a journey of redemption. Follow Nara's quest to face her haunted past. And the thing that I'm here for, zero-G space combat. Uh, Face hordes of enemies, fast-paced action, and exhilarating dogfights. Everything that I saw in the ads for this game just looked like it would be right up my alley like uh uh squadrons uh rogue squadron star foxy type combat and i just live for that shit i've put this game like four times on the playstation and every time i'm gonna start it something new comes out so i have never started it get distracted every single time yeah and uh it i think it's actually free on game pass right now it's called chorves um, so if anybody has played it or anybody has tried it out or actually beaten the game, uh, please let me know. Cause I really want to know what people think about this because I don't know anybody that has ever even mentioned this game before. And, uh, it's, it's definitely on my radar. Like I said, it's one bad game month away from actually getting played. <laughs> Bless it. What about your next book? My next book is Beast of Prey by Ayana Gray. Um, it was published last year, I think. Yeah, September 28th, 2021 uh, by Penguin Teen. One of the main reasons why I want to read this is because I got an ARC of the second book from Penguin Teen. Um, cause I'm a Penguin Teen partner now. Um, and Fairy Loot had actually included a special edition of this book in one of their boxes last year. And I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So might as well now with the second book coming out. Um, so, and it has, has a really high average rating on Goodreads. Granted, it only has 4,000 something reviews, but still, um, they've got more than four average stars. So that's good. Um, magic doesn't exist in the broken city of La Casa anymore, especially for girls like 16 year old Kofi. Indentured to the notorious night zoo, she cares for its fearsome and magical creatures to pay off her family's debts and secure their eventual freedom. Is but this the night, huh? Contemporary fantasy or whatever it's called, like modern day fantasy. Uh, like urban fantasy. Yeah. Uh, sounds like it might be. Don't you hate those? Sounds like it might be. But the night her <laughs> loved ones' own safety is threatened by the zoo's cruel master, Kofi unleashes a power she doesn't fully understand, and the consequences are dire. As the second son of a decorated hero, Econ is all but destined to become a son of the six, an elite warrior, and uphold a family legacy. But on the night of his final rite of passage, a fire upends his plans. In its midst, Econ not only encounters the Shaitani, a vicious monster that has plagued the city and his nightmare for nearly a century but a curious girl who seems to have the power to ward off the beast kofi's power eventually ultimately saves econ's life but his choice to let her flee dooms his hopes of becoming a warrior Dis- desperate to redeem himself econ vows to hunt the shatani down and in its reign of terror but he can't do it alone meanwhile kofi believes finding the shatani and selling it for a profit could be the key to solving her own problems Kofi and Ikon, each keeping their true motives secret from the other, form a tentative alliance and enter into the unknowns of the greater jungle, a world steeped in wild magic and untold t- dangers. The hunt begins, but it quickly becomes unclear whether they are the hunters or the hunted. In this much-anticipated series opener, fate binds two black teenagers together as they strike a dangerous alliance to hunt down the ancient creature menacing their home and discover much more than they bargained for. I don't think it's urban fantasy. I think it's just a zoo in a fantasy world. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's weird. Um, kind of sounds like urban fantasy to me. Yeah. And that is that person's name... Econ, E C O N. No, it's E K O N. Econ, 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 Econ. Econ. It sounds really fun though, and the cover's really pretty, and it sounds fun. Does it? And I have the sequel, so I I gotta read the first one. I mean, I guess you, you 
We got to. It sounds kind of like Ray Bearer, and I really liked Ray Bearer. Sounds similar vibe. I mean, that does sound like a very Keratin book. Magic, jungle, woo. Animals, danger, ooh. And the big giant monster at Monsters. the end turns out to be a, a deity that is going to save the world and the people he's been killing are actual bad people that need to die. Probably. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds about right. So uh, my next game is Lost Judgment. Um, this is the sequel to Judgment, or Judge Eyes, as it's known in Japan. Um, it says, Seize the truth when a convicted man reveals the location of a murder victim. Detective Yagami is called to revisit an impossible case of two simultaneous crimes. Pull no punches in this action noir thriller. Thriller? Thriller? Thriller. That put both your looting skills and judgment to the test. I'm going to be honest. I kind of disliked the original judgment in the beginning. I thought you liked it. I'm surprised you haven't played that yet. I did. So... No, this. I'm surprised you haven't played this yet. I did a little bit. Oh. I haven't finished it. Oh. I, I put in like two hours. Um, so the original Judgment, at the beginning, I didn't like it because it had a very, very different tone from the uh, Yakuza games. Because this is a spinoff of Yakuza. And I didn't know what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting uh, Yagami, the main character, to be kind of monotone, a little bit boring. Um, and I, I really didn't like it. He didn't have much of a personality, only that I fight good. I was a lawyer and now I'm a detective who's struggling to eat every day. Um, but as I kept playing the game and I started seeing Yagami interact with everybody else around him and learning more about his past and everything, I actually really ended up liking, uh, judgment. The problem with this game is that it kind of throws you into a case where you learn your mechanics of the game and all this stuff. And then it kind of goes back and feels like the opening hours of the original judgment, kind of boring, slow. Yagami is unrelatable. He he's, doesn't have much of a personality until you start seeing his friends show up. And then you start seeing how he interacts with them and you see, oh, this is actually... Okay, it's going back to what the good beats of Judgment were. And I like the combat because it is just straight up Yakuza beat em up gameplay. And you have different styles to switch between. And you actually have a third style that Yagami developed himself that's very different from the other two. One is fast, one is for air control, and then this one is kind of for like counters. And I, I like that there's a bunch of mini games and stuff to do, but again. It did suffer from that syndrome of I'm not really invested in something else that I want to play came out. So I, I do want to hop back into it because, like I said, the combat is fun. And uh, there's a, a dancing minigame, which is kind of weird because uh, somehow he manages to get a job at a high school to investigate some sort of murder. And he gets drafted by the dance team from the high school to teach them how to dance. And he's like, I don't dance. I'm a Kung Fu fighter. <laughs> and somehow he turns Kung Fu fighting into dance. That's so random. And the students all love him. And it's, it's, it's just strange. So, very, very strange. Yeah. So I, at some point I'm going to pop it back and just keep playing. But hopefully it's soon. I really just need to stop working and just enjoy video games for the rest of my life. I want to do the same with books. Yeah. No more work. Only no books. Work. So let, let's let's put, let's invest all of our money into the lotto. Maybe we'll hit it. I was rewatching Grace and Frankie for the millionth time today, and there's this episode when Robert has already retired. He was sick of it. And he's trying to convince Saul to retire, and Saul's like, "I don't know if I want to be retired yet. I don't know if it's time yet." And Peter is there with them, and he's like, "All I've ever wanted to be is retired." I look at the greeters at Walmart and I'm like, you lucky son of a bitch. Because <laughs> those are typically retired elderly yeah. people. Yeah. Or at least they used to be. Not so much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's your next book? My next book is She Gets the Girl by Rachel Lippincott and Allison Derrick. It published on April 5th of this year by Simon & Schuster, Simon Teen. Um, I got an ARC of this one and I've not read it yet. Oops. 
<laughs> okay, so she's all that meets What If It's Us in this swoon-worthy, hate-to-love YA romantic comedy from the New York number one times best-selling co-author of Five Feet Apart, which is about sick kids. It's like um, Fault in Our Stars. Rachel Lippincott and debut writer Allison Derrick. Alex Blackwood is a little bit headstrong with a dash of chaos and a whole lot of flirt. She knows how to get the girl. Keeping her on the other hand, not so much. Molly Parker has everything in her life totally in control, except for her complete awkwardness with just about anyone besides her mom. She knows she's in love with the impossibly cool Cora Myers. She just hasn't actually talked to her yet. Alex and Molly don't belong on the same planet, let alone the same college campus. But when Alex, fresh off a bad but hopefully not permanent breakup, discovers Molly's hidden crush as their paths cross the night before classes start, they realize they might have a common interest after all. Because maybe if Alex volunteers to help Molly learn how to get her dream girl to fall for her, she can prove to her ex that she's not a selfish flirt, that she's ready for an actual commitment. And while Alex is the last person Molly would ever think she could trust, she can't deny Alex knows what she's doing with girls, unlike her. As the two embark on their five-step plans to get their girls to fall for them, though, they both begin to wonder if maybe they're the ones falling for each other. Hmm. Yes. So they're both scheming to get girls to fall in love with the other one. And then they fall in love with each other. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Another lesbian book. Because girls need love, too. <laughs> Every, everyone needs love i know i know <laughs> such a weird way to say it i know girls need love too <laughs> not from wolf dildos not from wolf dildos no thank you so wh wh why do you want to read this because honestly the cover is super super cute and it just sounds like a cutesy premise that it might be terrible because it is technically like a YA contemporary and I don't really like those most of the time but typically if they're gay they're good. Did I review Ophelia after all on the podcast? I can't remember. Oh, I don't remember. It was a gay YA contemporary and I really liked it because it was gay. Just because it was gay. Yeah. YA contemporaries typically suck because it's like oh my boyfriend broke up with me and he was the one. That's a girl saying that. They suck. But then if you have gay kids, then it's so much better. You're rooting for them. I don't give a shit about those little hetero YA couples anymore. They're stupid and they don't know what they're doing. So I, nowadays, being gay is more socially acceptable. Yes. Not totally, unfortunately. Not totally, unfortunately. Yeah. But while we were growing up, it must have been a nightmare to be gay. Oh, yeah. I can only imagine. Oh, man, it was, like, real taboo, especially in South Georgia. Oh, Lord. Because I, 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 it was hard being straight and being like, I don't have a girlfriend. Being gay and being like, nobody else is gay but me. Must have been fucking awful. Yeah, I remember there was only, like, one kid who was out and, like, everybody knew it. And he was ostracized like crazy. That's a fucking shame. Yeah. Yep. It's pretty sad. All right, next game. Okay. My next game, I have I talked about this before on the show? What is it? Uh, this guy I won complete. I think so, you but think I'm not so? sure. I've heard you say that name so many fucking times. Disgaea. I don't know if it's just you telling me it or if you've talked about it here. I don't know. So uh, this is a tactics RPG game. It's uh, funny. I have played a little bit of it before 100 years ago on a PSP when I lived in Puerto Rico and I was like 19 or 20 or something. And I remember uh, it being hyped up to me by the guy at GameStop being like, oh, you can get to level 999. What? And cost uh, 9,999 points of damage to your enemies. And it's really funny and it's really good. And it's good tactics combat. If you like Final Fantasy tactics, I'm like, I love Final Fantasy tactics. Let's let's go. And I played it and I was like, this is hard. And I gave up. Oh. Um, but I want to try it. I, I've been slowly buying uh, all of them, all of the Disgaea games. I think the only one that I'm missing is Disgaea 2. But I think that's only on PSP and PlayStation 2. And I don't have a PlayStation 2 or a PSP. I could look to see if I can find it on the Vita. I should do that. But I do have 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I do have the printing games. And I have all of, all of the uh, NIS classic collections that have been released. And uh, I... I really just want to play these games. Um, 
I just really need to commit. I'm also playing fucking Fire Emblem Three Houses, and I don't know if I like it or not yet. Um, so it says, The Netherworld is in chaos as Laharl fights for the throne. Joined by devious vassal Etna and angel trainee Flone, the classic story returns after 15 years as the definitive remaster of this Gaia Hour of Darkness. Uh, it includes an Etna mode and a new playable character. Etna mode? Etna mode. Etna mode. And you know it's funny? It's capitalized, too. Look, mode. It's oh, capitalized. my gosh. It's totally <laughs> Etna mode. Uh, and new playable characters. Um... Yeah, I, I, I want to play this. I, I definitely need to make uh, space to play this. And I just need to stop being so tired so I can play more video games. Stop being tired, bitch. Yeah, definitely. I need to. What's your last book? My last book is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Okay. Um, you remember... Uh, when the, you bought me this book? No, The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Yes. When uh, Scary Woman... Gives the little the kid, winter witch or whatever her name is. Yeah, gives is. the little kid the uh, what is it? Edmund. Sweet, a Swedish delights. Yes. Every time you say violent delights, I just think of those candies. Oh my god, and horrifying Tilda Swinton. <laughs> Tilda Swinton. Oh god, that woman. Yeah, she can be scary. Oh, she can be scary. She literally is scary personified. Oh, oh, oh. my nightmares are made up of Tilda Swinton. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay, yeah. I start to think I might have bi curiosity feelings, and then I see her, and I'm like, oh, no, no. <laughs> it's so fucked up. I know, no, it's not true. I'm exaggerating, but she is scary. Woo, she's scary. Okay, so this book. The year is 1926, and Shanghai hums to the tune of debauchery. A blood feud between two gangs runs the streets red, leaving the city helpless in the grip of chaos. At the heart of it all is 18-year-old Juliette Kai, a former flapper who has returned to assume her role as the proud heir of the Scarlet Gang, a network of criminals far above the law. Their only rivals in power are the White Flowers, who have fought the Scarlets for generations. And behind every move is their heir. Roma Montagav, Juliet's first love and first betrayal. But when gangsters on both sides show signs of instability culminating in clawing their own throats out, the people start to whisper of a contagion, a madness, of a monster in the shadows. As the deaths stack up, Juliet and Roma must set their guns and grudges aside and work together, for if they can't stop this mayhem, then there will be no city left for either to rule. Perfect for fans of the lost magician and descendant of the crane, this heart-stopping debut is an imaginative Romeo and Juliet retelling set in 1920s Shanghai with rival gangs and a monster in the depths of the Huang Pao River. Huang Pu. Huang Pu River. Huang Pu. Yeah. Uh, this was published on November 17th, 2020 by Margaret K. McEldry Books, which I believe is an imprint of Simon & Schuster. If um, I am not mistaken. So, it, hmm. I don't know why when you were talking about it and saying, oh, like the gangs and shit. Yes. Um, I started thinking about uh, that it was set in the uh, Industrial Revolution era in no. London. Shanghai. 1920s. Roaring yeah, okay. 20s. Shanghai. Roaring 20s in Shanghai. Downton Abbey. Shanghai. <laughs> <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> in the middle of Shanghai. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, Even bloodier. Shit. I have heard so many mixed things about these books. I have heard that they are amazing. I've heard that they are a joke. Um, I think there are two now, maybe three. Are there two? I mean, it does sound kind of cool, except for the whole Romeo and Juliet thing, because I, you know, they're gonna end up hooking up. Well, no shit. And they're both probably well. No, they can't die because there's a second book. Unless the second book's about different characters, I'm not going to look it up and spoil that for myself. <laughs> um, but I hate Romeo and Juliet. I hate it so. I can see this going very poorly, very mm -hmm. very poorly. Plus, it's like gang violence. I don't give a shit. I do. I. That's know. the part that calls me the attention more. Uh... Like okay, okay. So picture this. Picture this, right? Gangs are killing each other. There's an eldritch deity making everybody go insane. And the gang starts killing each other from within. 
right? So there's they uh -huh. they start killing each other from within. These two notice that everybody's going mad and they need to figure out where the hell is this thing that's making everybody mad coming from. And they find out that it's a monster like Cthulhu that lives in the bottom of the river. The Huang Pu River. Exactly. Huang Pu. So is that is that more or less what it is? Or is it just I like, don't know, I haven't read it yet. <laughs> That's what it sounded like to me. Like, that would be an awesome read to me. Just don't make them fall in love. Just make them kill each other at the end. Because They were already in love. They were first love and first betrayal. Oh, Lord. It's so stupid. Ugh, that just puts an, an extra layer of stupid on it and just makes me not interested. Yeah, I've, I've heard that it's really terrible, but also really great. Hmm. Mm -hmm. How many greats, how many bads have you heard? I don't remember. Let's look at the Goodreads rating. Uh, out of almost 81,000 reviews, it's at a 3.99, which is... Very middle of the road. Well, no, but it's almost four. It's almost four. So that's actually pretty good, but borderline bad. Mm. Mm. Anytime I see that an average Goodreads rating is in a three zone, anywhere from three to 3.99, I'm like... It's probably going to be terrible. Is it always? Mm, typically, yeah. Although, you know, I was thinking about it. I think... I Planet Barbarians is like a two, and it's oh, your favorite shut book up. ever. <laughs> it is not my favorite book ever. Um, No, that's not a good example. I know there's a book that I read recently that I really liked that had a pretty low Goodreads rating, and I don't think it was Ice Planet Barbarians, but let me see what... That rating is ah, it's three point six nine. <laughs> sixty four thousand reviews and three point six nine or sixty four thousand ratings. Ice Planet Barbarians, oh. um, but that's not the one because I mean I would expect that to have a pretty low average rating. Um, God, I really just can't remember what it was. It was something I really liked, and it was a terrible average. Fuck. Oh, well, on to my last game. I'll remember one day. Yeah. So uh, my last game, I've actually never played any of these games in the series. Um, and I just want to start with a third game because apparently these games are somewhat Dragon Ball RPGs. Oh, boy. Dragon Ball Z RPGs. And uh, I, was, I went to the Wise Drums live stream uh, about a month ago. And... Uh, Weiss played a song from this game and they just started talking about it and it just went on a whole thing and they're like, oh, it's so awesome. Like there's transformations and everything. It's basically Dragon Ball, but with an RPG. Uh, so you got to play it. And I, and I said, okay, then let me check it out on the PS Vita. Let me see if it's there. And it was. So I bought it and it is Breath of Fire 3. I have no idea what this game is about. So uh, let me see here. Uh, the game begins in a far corner of the world where a rare and powerful mineral is being harvested from fossilized remains of dragons. Ew. When a large deposit is cracked open by dynamite, a preserved baby dragon emerges and is attacked by the frightened miners. The dragon defends himself, quickly killing anyone who rushes in to fight it. Eventually, the managers manage to ambush the dragon and after knocking it unconscious, place it in a cage board a train to be taken away for experimentation okay i am i'm, I'm kind of sold on that <laughs> that sounds actually pretty awesome um and i did play the opening i did see when they bust open the thing with the dragon inside and the game did something for me that it then a game hasn't done in a long time since final fantasy tactics what it made me very Angry. No. Anxious. No. Excited. Yes. Oh. Yes. You don't get excited anymore? Not at this level. Because this game does the thing where the field is uh, polygonal 3D with little sprites all over the place. And it's polygonal, but it's so beautifully detailed. And the characters are just so beautifully detailed three, uh, 2D sprites that I was like, oh, shit, I need to play this game. It looks so good. And I am going to play this game. After I finish uh, Dragon Quest Eight, 
um, which I'm about halfway through. And after I finish uh, Wind Waker, I'm going straight into this bitch and playing it. I am so hyped to play it. Apparently there's a really cool transformation that's just like Goku going Super Saiyan for the first time. And I am so hyped to do it. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. I was so, I, I was I'm kind of um, scared because I did hear a rumor that once the licenses go out on the PS1 and PSP games on the PlayStation Store, they're going to be removed from the PlayStation Store and from the consoles that have it already pre-installed. So I'm afraid that all of my games that I have on the PSP are going to go out and I won't be able to play them anymore. So um, I really should jump into this. And I did look up to see if there was a way to get this running on the PlayStation Classic because I do have a PlayStation Classic. And yeah, I can get it running on it. I don't need a special control, control, controller to play it. Controller. To play it. So uh, I should be pretty good. Where is the PlayStation Classic? Still in the box. It's still in the box? Never been opened. Are you kidding me? No, I'm serious. Oh my god. Is yeah. the Genesis thing still in the box? No, it's right there. It's under oh. the desk. Is the SNES is not in the box. No, it's right, right there. And it's modded to hell and back. Oh my god. <laughs> I still need to put a, a Game Boy Advance shell on it so I can play Game Boy Advance games on it. Can't believe it's still in the box. Yeah. I, I got it for like 40 bucks at a GameStop on clearance. Yeah, I remember, but in Georgia. then you never opened it. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. You were mad that I bought it. Kind of. It's all right. It was forty dollars down from a hundred, so yeah. yeah. At least I didn't spend overnight waiting at the Target parking lot with a coworker. Oh my god, I, I was it. so mad at you that night. Ugh. It was probably like the first time I was like really irritated with you. Well, no, it's not. <laughs> first time was over smoking. Oh, yeah. yeah Wait, so. no. Because you were still at Universal when you did that, weren't you? No. No? When no. you went to Target? No. I was home from trucking. Okay. Well, those were the first two times <laughs> that I was mad at you. <laughs> All right. So uh, do you want to run down the books and games real quick? Yeah. All right. So what's your first book? My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. I have The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds. Then I have The Girl from the Sea by Molly Knox Ostertag. And I have Jorves, otherwise known as Chorus. And I have Beast of Prey by Iona Gray. Lost Judgment. She Gets the Girl by Rachel Lippincott. And I can't remember the second. Allison Derrick. There you go. Yeah. Derek Wibley. <laughs> Avril Lavigne. <laughs> oh, God. This Guy a One Complete. These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Mm, tasty. And Breath of Fire 3. It was Turkish Delights, not Swedish Delights. Turkish. Turkish Delights. Yes. Yes. They also sound like they're stuffed with turkey. Oh, my God. That's not... I just Keep going. Hey, a uh, uh, little bit of housekeeping that we do at the end. Our art was done by Metamorphic A. Keridan, is there anything else you want to say before we end the show? No. No? I'm good. Okay. So, uh... You want to say goodbye? Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>